XVX are a brand which produces a wide range of keyboards which are reasonably priced and shipped to most countries worldwide. Their keyboards are customizable, well made and aimed at anyone that has an interest in keyboards whether that's for office work or gaming. And here I've been given the XVX K75 Pro to review. It's a 75% layer mechanical keyboard with a row of function keys and small display screen that gives you information about the keyboard in the top right hand corner. Now XVX has provided me with this keyboard to try out so let's see if I actually like it. The XVX K75 Pro is essentially a compact 75% layer mechanical keyboard. It has 80 keys and a small display screen in the top right hand corner. As it's a 75% layer keyboard, it doesn't have a number pad, but it does come with a row of function keys that you'd get with most typical keyboards. This keyboard comes in a wide range of colours and with the XVX website offering this keyboard in a powder blue, a mauve colour, a sort of light grey colour and what XVX are calling a Yukio E, which I've had to google and turns out is a style of Japanese art. The Yukio E design is a bluish colour with waves that are printed onto the keycaps. This version also uniquely has side legend keycaps, so backlighting shines through the side of the keys rather than over the top. Unfortunately, this version was sold out when I selected the keyboard, so I have the standard powder blue colour. This keyboard comes with white, light blue and a sort of bluish grey set of keycaps. The design of this keyboard looks fairly classic and it's fairly minimal except for the quirky little screen in the top right hand corner. XVX are marketing this as an affordable aluminium keyboard which is durable and does feel relatively premium. This keyboard features a CNC aluminium case with a branded back plate. Because of the aluminium construction this keyboard is very heavy for its size weighing 1.7 kilograms. And to give you a bit of context, a 65% layout keyboard, which I recently reviewed, the EpoMaker Tide 65, only weighed 1.27 kilograms. And I thought that was really heavy at the time. The weight of the XVX K75 Pro should keep it stable on your desk when you're typing, and it should help with its durability. The weight also just helps to give the keyboard a more premium feel. The keycaps themselves have a cherry profile which is fairly standard for this type of keyboard. They are comfortable to type on and I don't really have any complaints. The keycaps with three of the colour options are dye sublimated which should make them fairly durable but ideally double shot PBT would have been better. Also you aren't going to get any shine through from the backlighting so that's something to consider if you like shine through keycaps. The Yukio E version of the keycaps does have shine through keycaps although like I said before these have shine through side legends, which means they're not, you're not going to get the light out the top of the keycaps. And keyboards with side legend keycaps can take some getting used to. In saying that, the Yukio E version does look pretty cool. As I said before, I would have picked that had it been available at the time when I selected the keyboard. Somewhat annoyingly, this keyboard is not height adjustable. It only has rubber feet in the bottom. Although the keyboard itself is angled, it really does annoy me when mechanical keyboards don't give you the option to adjust the height, as it can just make typing really uncomfortable. In saying that, as the K75 Pro has a built-in angle, it is comfortable to type on. You don't have a choice of switches with this keyboard, as the only option is the XVX medium purple switches, and these are linear switches, and they sound nice to type on, although I personally prefer tactile switches. The good news is these switches are hot swappable, so you can change the switches out to ones that you prefer, as it is compatible with most 3-pin and 5-pin mechanical switches. As for the dimensions of the keyboard, it has a length of 317.5mm, a depth of 135mm, and a height of 24.9mm. Now onto the unique aspect of this keyboard, and that's a small screen in the top right hand corner. They advertise it as an interactive interface that provides real time updates. Basically what they mean is it's a small colour screen which can give you lots of information about the keyboard itself when you're using it. The home screen offers you information about how the keyboard is connected and if you're using a Windows or Mac operating system. The screen itself can also be used to select different backlighting options for the keyboard. You have the option to change the colour of the backlighting, the intensity of the backlighting and the pattern of the backlighting. And you can also check the volume of the device you're using the keyboard with. The final screen option allows you to have a GIF being displayed on loop as part of the keyboard design. The screen itself is a neat little addition to the keyboard that helps it differentiate from other competitors. Overall, it feels like a decent, minimal, 75% layer mechanical keyboard which can be used for either office work or gaming. It's priced well at $93.99 given it is a full aluminium keyboard and there are definitely pricier keyboards out there. 
The XVX K75 Pro has the ability to connect to up to three different devices, and this can be done through Bluetooth or through using the 2.4 gigahertz wireless dongle that's provided with the keyboard. The keyboard also allows you to neatly store the wireless receiver at the back of the keyboard. The keyboard itself also comes with a USB-C to USB type A cable, which connects to the back of the keyboard and allows this keyboard to be used using a wired connection whilst charging. The keyboard also recognizes which operating system you're using it with. So if you connect it to a MacBook, it automatically adjusts the keyboard to iOS setting. Whereas if you're connected to a PC, it'll automatically adjust it to Windows. Now, according to the XVX website, the keyboard has a 4,000 milliamp per hour battery and I haven't been using it long enough to actually see how long the battery lasts. But when I have tried to charge it, it does seem to charge pretty quickly. And I can't see this keyboard running out of battery very often. And it can be used whilst it's charging as well, so that's another added bonus. Now, one issue I've got with the XVX K75 Pro is the fact that they use their own software for customization. The software is fine, but I much prefer when keyboards use QMK VIA software for the customization. And a lot of keyboards at this price point offer that as part of the keyboard package itself. I find QMK VIA customization software really intuitive and it allows for key mappings and macros to be customized for any work or gaming that you're doing. When you order this keyboard, you'll find that it comes in a fairly standard box. Inside, you'll find the keyboard itself, the user manual, which you're probably unlikely to read. You'll also get a USB type A to USB type C cable, as well as a 2.4 gigahertz wireless dongle. And finally, you also get a keycap switch puller with the keyboard. Overall, I'd say that the XVX K75 Pro keyboard is all right. It's fairly standard, 75% layout mechanical keyboard with a somewhat quirky small screen in the top right hand corner. It can give you some information about the keyboard. It does have a multi purpose element to it as it could be used for both office work and gaming. However, I think I would have preferred it if I'd gotten the Yukio E version just because it's somewhat unique compared to other keyboards. The other three color options are fairly standard. Now that I've got this keyboard, all four versions of this keyboard are available on both the XVX website and on Amazon, and I'll leave links to this keyboard in the description down below. If you have found this video useful, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.